Hi again, this is Mike. Welcome back, the philosopher engineer. Today is May 22nd, 2020 still. Uh, our theme for the month is prepare for growth. Uh, hopefully that's going to be the case for many of you. Um, with May flowers, prepare for growth. We're coming out of the coronavirus to different uh, levels and different states and different places with different businesses. But uh, hopefully we're starting to see a uh, upward direction or at least an opportunity to restart and do some proactive things, take some proactive steps to prepare for growth. Today's topic is accelerate product development. That's really kind of our commitment and focus. Oh, lose my hat here. It was raining outside. I forgot I had my hat on. Um, we kind of focus on a theme for the month. So we have a theme for the month of prepare for growth. And for each week, we have a different theme this month. Uh, first week was purpose. Uh, and that's aligned purpose. We kind of get alignment and we're all pulling the same direction. Then we have process um, and then we get into action. This week we're talking about action and then we'll talk about setting that platform for growth. Well, there's a couple big things here. You can see I have right people plus right process is the right product. It's also a much faster process. So what do we mean by accelerate product development? That's probably one of the most important things for the executives that I work with. And I'm calling this under, I'm putting this under Mike's executive conversation because this is really something that affects the whole company. Uh, how much faster can we go and how do we go faster? Well, I'm going to put a number out here. I think you can go 30 to 50% faster in your product development. And the irony of it is when you go faster with a proactive process, you actually have greater confidence in the outcome, but greater confidence in, in reliability and other things because we're not guessing. So we're going to dig into this process and what we mean by it. Our last topic was a scoping analysis, and, and that's a very efficient way to, um, to kind of gauge where you're at. And a scoping analysis is a very quick analysis, but it's across the board. It's, it's systematic. It's, um, it, it's um, consistent that you're hitting every single function and every single um, component to make sure that it's ready. And the key here in being proactive is we don't wait for failure or surprise. We go find the failure and we address it and we kind of have a, a systematic way to um, rank everything. So we'll get into that. So the scoping analysis we talked about last time is one way to accelerate things. Obviously getting the right people helps a lot too. If you have a really particularly difficult problem and you have an expert that can come in even for a short time period, they may be able to save you a lot of lost time by steering you in the right direction or maybe even doing some of that work for a limited time period. So having a specialist is certainly uh, a key thing. But I'm gonna focus mostly on process because there's a huge opportunity in process. Uh, obviously we wanna work as teams, we wanna work effectively and be engaged and have communication, good communication and the decision-making process is, is crucial. So, you know, having a systematic process is key. Now, what I wanna talk about is a couple key things. We talked about scoping analysis. That's where your first analysis is very quick and simple, and that's to gauge how much margin do you have? How much design margin? Do you have um, parts of your design that are way over designed and you don't need to analyze anymore? You could, you know, kind of simplify them later, or optimize them, and then you have parts of your design that are under designed. And those are your weaknesses. You're looking for that Achilles heel, looking for that weak link where the product will not succeed. Because your first goal is to be successful, uh, to make sure that you don't have failure in the field or failure in production or failure to launch a great product. That's your first goal. You can have some parts of that are overbuilt and that can be a cost reduction later. So what I wanna focus on is a couple big things to help you go much faster. Uh, first, it's the right philosophy and then the right process. So the way you go much faster is, like I said, you, you break everything. Now, once you do all your math modeling, you gotta embrace the math and the calculations and use the computers and understand these things. Where you gain the most um, time, the way you go the fastest, is to do more work virtually. So in the virtual, the way I would say, in your virtual testing and your physical testing, you're gonna model things in math or Excel or in CAD and finite element modeling. You're gonna use these computer tools to test your product virtually and physically concurrently. But the more you do virtually, you can go faster and you'll save a lot of time on testing. And when you, what you're aiming for is to get out of a trial and error mindset, a guessing mindset, which really delays projects and reduces confidence. Instead, what you want to do is, you know, evaluate things virtually and then do them physically. And where you really get it, 
get advanced. This is sort of the advanced technique. Uh, is you start getting into um, using the computer simulations for probability and statistics using Monte Carlo analysis. And you, what you end up with is a virtual heat map. So rather than testing things for three, four, or five, or six months, you're able to identify the, the sensitive areas and combinations of uh, parameters to where you have problem areas. Then your physical testing can be focused and concentrated and strategic in those areas. And that's how you accelerate the project. It can be done you know, much, much faster. So it's a little bit more spent up front. We talked about that before, that if you learn things in the concept phase, you save a lot of money, you save a lot of time, but it's that consistency, um, it's that systematic process of going function by function. And if you do too much analysis too early, you're wasting your time. You want that quick analysis to scope what you have, what's the landscape. And you really can't accelerate. I think you can go further than, than 50%. 50% faster means you finish the project in two thirds of time. Um, I think you can go twice as fast if you do all of these things and, and rethink the process. Each process can be improved. Now, obviously you have your current process. You're developing a product a certain way, you have a certain history, and you shouldn't stop doing that. You should keep doing that. But while you're moving, it's a moving train. Uh, you're diagnosing what works really well and which areas could use improvement. And then we can map it against best practices and say, how do we go faster? And uh, there's really no downside. You'll save a lot of money. You'll be more competitive in the market. Um, and you bring the right people just to help you out and set those systems up. And once you improve those systems and learn them and commit to them, um, it becomes permanent. It changes your organization, not just for that project, but for the whole future, as long as you continue with it. And then you can add to it. So. I think about it in terms of, you know, instead of just adding, you're multiplying. So when you improve a process by 30% or 40 or 50%, you're multiplying. You're, you're gonna continue to use that better process in the future. That's why it's so important to assess your process and improve it. And we call it a knowledge-driven process, absolutely. Uh, it has to be adjusted to each particular set of risks and each type of product uh, and the scale to get the right return on investments or return on investment, it, it is all ultimately about ROI. You're gonna spend money proactively and you want a good return on that investment. In a product development, you'll get a huge return on investment. I, we could share many examples. So, accelerate product development. I think a lot of people would like to have that. We can talk about how to do that. We can analyze your situation and, and kind of get you off on that path if you'd like. Certainly it's math-based. Certainly it's using tools that are already there in the virtual tool set. You know, the, the, the tools have gotten better and better, more and more powerful, and yet many companies really haven't figured out how to leverage that huge opportunity to go much, much faster. All right, well, I hope everyone's doing well here in May. Uh, it's raining here. I don't know if it's raining where you're at, but uh, it is beautiful outside. And uh, hopefully the economy starts to open up and get back to normal or maybe better than normal, especially if you start improving your processes at work. Uh, and I think people enjoy it. Um, as well, when everyone sees the momentum and the action and the acceleration, that, that just kind of boosts all the enthusiasm for the project as well. All right, well have a wonderful day and a great week and we'll talk again soon, thank you.